So these companies keep sending out these batteries and most of them are garbage. So instead of making individual review videos and putting you guys to sleep, we're gonna rip them all apart in one video and see which one's the best one. And some of them state that they have low temp charging protection, so it might actually be worthwhile. Some of these batteries are so cheap that it's very questionable what the build quality will be like. So if the build quality is good and very impressive, then we'll do further testing. If not, we'll just throw it to the side and forget about it for all time. Just like my dad did to me. Just kidding, my dad loves me. So that's enough talking, let's get started. What a silly color of a battery. We have a golden Tyco run. I've never heard of this company before, but they call it the TC12100. So 12 volt, 100 amp hour, and they sell this for $599. And on the front, there's lots of information about the battery and a Bluetooth app. So they're probably using a higher quality BMS. And for $599, that's pretty cool. Look at this. I have never seen this before. This is so different. There's actually temperature sensors and there's two of them. So first we're gonna see if these actually work. So first we're charging with five amps. Then we're gonna stick it in some ice cold water and it's not working. What a bummer. Let's try the other temperature sensor. Oh, there we go. So this one works for low temperature. I wonder if the other sensor is for high temperature. Hey, this thing is melting and it's not triggering. Let's see if this one that works with low temperature also works with high temp. Oh, wow. There's only one sensor that does low and high temp protection. The other one does nothing at all. They're both connected at the same spot on the BMS. Very strange, but it does work and all you need is one sensor. So they should program this one to work though. I don't know why they want it. So there's a heat sink on the front and the back, and then there's fiberboard to protect the cells from the BMS. Oh, this one's called VIP BMS. There was a new Chins battery with low temp charging protection that had one of these. And that was very recent, so these are a new BMS to the market, it seems. Now this pack is using eight cells in a series parallel configuration with welded bus bars. And it's interesting to note that a lot of companies are starting to use this exact same configuration with these same cells. And the build quality is good, but the wire management could be better. So let's give it some power and test out the Bluetooth function. Functionality. And now the app is connected to the battery and it was very easy and I've noticed a lot of companies are using this one But you'll notice that the state of charge indicator has not been calibrated It will be synced once you hit absorption and high voltage disconnect But yeah right now it shows 99% but it's probably like 50 or 60% Let's see if we can change these settings. Oh, you need a password So yeah, you could probably contact the company and then change you know whatever you want Which I don't recommend a lot of people on the forum keep trying to change their cycle bandwidth parameters just leave it it will be fine um, it's only for advanced users if you know what you're doing now compared to other clone knockoffs this is pretty good build quality for $599 but why would you get this when you can buy an SOK and it has all of the same features but better build quality so personally I wouldn't buy this but they did do a pretty decent job there's nothing actually bad about it I'm just saying that you could get better for the same money all right that's enough time for this battery let's move on to the next one. Oh boy this one's a bit heavier oh this is a 150 amp hour <laughs> so what is going on here we have a cycle life estimate with 50 percent depth of discharge we have a case material is stainless steel which is obviously not true and then down here it says with lcd screen or not it says yes and there is no LCD screen to be found. So a couple red flags from this company called Socurdy? Socurdy. And this battery is $549. But this marketing team needs help. There are so many spelling and grammar errors and it says it has an intelligent self-cooling function. It amazes me that they can't hire someone that knows English and just edit this in like 10 minutes. It wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> Whoa, these have marks on this side where the foam was. Why are these damaged? There is nothing there that would damage these cells. It's just foam and air. But these are scratched up like a hard object hit them. 
And I didn't use any tools on that side. That That is strange. These cells don't look very good. I've never seen black wrapped cells. Oh man, look at this. What a piece of junk. Jeez, come on guys, you could do better than this. Look at these solder joints, guys. On the terminal, I hope they soldered it before they welded it. This just looks awful. What an unprofessional battery build. No wonder these are so cheap, you get what you pay for. I think these cells were just re-wrapped. I think they did it themselves. And there is no sensor connected to the cells from the BMS. So for this price point, you are way better off buying an Ampere Time or any of the other clones that do not have low temp charging protection. And thank goodness, because this build quality is atrocious. Yeah, I am not impressed by this company. They have inaccurate marketing materials, junky looking cells, bad build quality. And yeah, you can buy so much better for the same price. So let's move on. This sticker is crooked. Do these companies try it all? It's called the Vest Woods N-Cube Lithium Ion Battery. And nowhere on the front of this battery does it tell you that it's lithium iron phosphate. Going by the charge voltage and the capacity, um, this is lithium iron phosphate, but they need to advertise it. All right, let's see how much it costs. Vest Woods N-Cube. <laughs> Wow, they actually have big, nice batteries. Why did they send this out? Is this the same company? Yeah, it is. They have server rack batteries. We are good at the construction of container energy storage system. The system capacity can be flexibly expanded. We are committed to using the best technology and products to promote the popularization of global green energy. I'm not seeing a price and I'm not finding this small battery anywhere. Let's go on Amazon. No way, $320? And it says it has low temp charging protection? No way. Okay, I'm excited now. If this has low temp charging protection for $320, these are gonna sell out, but there's only 15 left in stock. Maybe you can buy them somewhere else. So you're telling me that this can handle 100 amps continuous? Look how small it is. I don't know about that, man. It is well designed though like this fiberboard is built for this bms and everything is labeled and they even have 90 degree lugs yeah this company is very different than the other ones even the cells have cell holders not bad actually but man this bms looks so tiny but there is no low temp charging protection sensor anywhere these are the new type of fets that are used in the new sok bms so these might actually be able to handle 100 amps I just realized something. This company makes other server rack batteries. And if you look at how these are labeled, the cell holders and the configuration and the protection for the terminals, you can see how their design priorities translated into this smaller pack. But why did they use this BMS without low temp charging protection and then advertise on the site that it has it? The cell holders on the top and the bottom are fantastic. Imagine if Ampere Time, instead of using just tape, actually had these cell holders. But I almost forgot this thing is $320. So for the price, it's actually pretty good. Let's just try 100 amps and see what happens. Ooh, 133 amps. It's not that warm. 100 amps exactly. Yeah, not bad guys. I think it's actually working. Let's come back in a few minutes and see how much it heats up. So I've actually had a heat camera for a very long time, but I never use it in the videos. Let's see what we can find. 137 degrees Fahrenheit, 138. And on this side, the solder joint is at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not bad. So I was totally wrong. This thing can handle 100 amps. And it has fiberboard if it were to get really hot. So it's, it's, yeah, it works. If they had low temp charging protection in this build quality for that price, $319, they would have a really nice battery. Now what I dislike is this spray foam. I don't think that that's a smart idea. See how it's sprayed right here and it's touching this terminal? And the marketing materials could be a lot better. And it specifically states built-in low temp cutoff prevents charging zero degrees Celsius, only interior cell charging cutoff. So they need to reword that first off, and then they should actually add it if they advertise it. Typically at this price point, the batteries are pretty awful. So that's why I'm so impressed. If you have like an automatic gate opener that needs a 12 volt battery, this would be a good idea. So let's move on to the next battery. 
Next up is the Lossagy 12 volt 100 amp hour, and I've actually seen their batteries on Amazon, but I've never torn one apart. And it's $400, that's a pretty good price. And there's less spelling errors than the other advertisements I've been reading. And it does not say that it has low tip charging protection. So it's in the same market as a Chins or an Ampere Time. God dang it. Oh, look at this! We have another VIP BMS. These things are everywhere now. This one looks nice though. This board looks way better than the other ones. Oh, oh, these are pouch cells. This is the battery that Lithium Solar reviewed like a couple weeks ago. I heard that some Chins batteries actually have pouch cells as well now too, which isn't bad, but it's hard for me to figure out which ones they're actually using and to find the actual data sheet. But at this price point, this build quality looks fantastic. And it has the same high temperature switch as the Ampere Times and Chins and all those clones. Now let's take a second to talk about pouch cells and the requirements of building a battery with them. The most crucial thing that you need to know is if these pouch cells are wrapped up in some tape that's inappropriate. You have to have it in a box where the pouch cells can expand and contract a little bit, but not too much. And the cell holders that they're using look like they're designed for use with these cells. If these were mismatched or a different shape or size, I would say that that was a massive red flag. But no, this looks great. And check out this cable management and bus bar configuration. They did a fantastic job here for a $399 battery. Now, considering how many batteries we've seen with this VIP BMS, I think we're gonna see these all over the place. For some reason, they really like these, and every single one that we've tested has worked perfectly. But I'm gonna keep my eye out on the forum to see if anybody complains about these or destroys one. Now it says that all of their batteries are grade A UL certifi certified, not listed, UL certified cells. But it would be nice to have a data sheet to see more about these cells and who's actually making them. But overall, pretty impressive. This is not bad. I was expecting much worse for the price. Now would you choose this over a Chins? That is a tough question. I do not know much about the company. I think they might all be the same company. They're all using the same VMS and the cable management is very similar to a Chins. So yeah, I, I think they're probably all the same. Now check this out. We have a Ruxu. Like two or three years ago, we tore these things apart and found lots of problems. And they're back with a stainless steel battery which looks like an SOK clone. So yeah, let's open it up and see how it compares. This is a nice battery, guys. We have a JBD and it looks like an SOK battery down here. This is nice. What in the world did Ruxu do? They must have fired everybody and got some new employees because this looks great. Very similar to SOK with this balance wire configuration. And we have a 100 amp JBD with a Bluetooth. Oh, here it is. Oh, and here's the temperature sensor. Uh-oh. This is supposed to be taped or glued to the cells, not just dangling about inside the case. This case is metal, so it would probably be triggered. But yeah, that's not good. They need to attach it to the cells. They're using stainless steel for this whole thing. I cannot believe that this is a Ruxu battery. I was not expecting such a good build quality. I think these are the same cells in the SOK battery. Let's open one up and see if they are. Oh, this is a new SOK battery. They totally redesigned the new SOK battery. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour. And yeah, the BMS used to be on the roof of the battery and now it's attached similar to the Ruxu. And the SOK is using solid pieces of copper to connect the main supply conductors to the terminals. On all the other ones, they used to use wires just like these. And this one has a Bluetooth chip right here, and SOK manufactures this BMS on their own. So I think Ruxu was trying to copy SOK, but SOK has a massive upgrade now, so it's on a totally different level. There is a possibility that the Ruxu costs more because stainless steel case and it's using a JBD BMS. They're not making their own BMS like SOK, so I would not be surprised if this one actually costs like $100 more or something. What? This one has heaters. Dang, SOK is actually innovating, man. And the temperature sensor is in a potted ring terminal. What a beefy battery. A few numbers here, but it ends with a thousand D. 
And this one's 1000D, 0ALCBA, 0ALCBA, 351, 091. So these might be slightly different cells, even though they're the same exact size and the terminals look the same, but they are the same manufacturer. And the heater pads are between the cells. But this one does cost more, so let's look up the price. And the MSRP is $630. Yeah, these companies are going to have a hard time catching up to SOK. The Ruxu's $559. So I think these are both priced pretty well. This one's the same price as the older SOK, and it has pretty much the same build quality as the older SOK. But the new SOK has a lot more features, and for the price, compared to other internal heated batteries, it's pretty good. Now there is a problem with internally heated 12 volt batteries. If you were to put these into series for 24 or 48 volts and one of the batteries has the heaters triggered before the other ones, that means one of the batteries will be discharging when the other ones are not, so they'll become imbalanced in that series string. And this is true for most other internally heated batteries on the market, including like the new Chin's um, internally heated battery. So if you're using 12 volt batteries with internal heaters, only use them for 12 volt systems. Do not chain them together for 48 or 24 volts. Also, I need to give credit to SOK because using these copper strips is a step in the right direction. The more expensive batteries use that, and it's a lot better than trusting these cables. It's pretty much all I can think about for these batteries. Now we have one more battery, and it's an SOK. So we're finally reviewing their 24 volt SOK battery. Personally, I'm not a big fan. Um, for the cost of this, Instead of buying two of them for a 48 volt battery, you're better off buying an SOK server rack or any other server rack. But if you are constrained to 24 volts, they do have an option for you. Oh boy. So same cells as before, same BMS, everything is the same, but they just took two 12 volt batteries and put them in series with a single 24 volt BMS. And there is nothing special about it. This is why I didn't review it on its own. There's nothing for me to say. And it is an SOK, so the build quality is great. They're using high quality cells. But yeah, it's identical to the 12 volt 100 amp hour, the traditional one. But it is cool to see, this is nice. It is a good battery. Something else to mention is the Bluetooth app and connectivity of the new SOKs is really nice. But lots of other companies seem to be using the same exact app. And lots of companies are using JBD and VIP BMS, which is, I think, why we're seeing less problems in the reviews. In the past, Ruxu and other batteries had problems because they were using junky BMSs. Very rarely did we ever have problems with the cells themselves. And it's wild to see the different changes in design over the years. Even a few years ago, we only had a couple options and they were all pretty bad. It's pretty crazy what you get for your money nowadays. And it's really crazy that there are some batteries on the market, specific name brand companies, that still sell their batteries for double the price of these. And these are actually innovating. They're actually changing and getting better. And those older batteries haven't changed for years. So I'm surprised that people still purchase um, other name brand batteries. I'm not gonna say any names, but yeah, for the price, this thing is literally half the cost of some of the other lithium batteries and has more features. Remember how much it was for an internally heated battery about two years ago? And now you can buy this. I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy how fast they're changing these designs. So I hope you guys liked the video, just tearing apart a bunch of batteries. Let me know what you guys think about these batteries below. Um, I would avoid the Soaker D or whatever it was called. Um, the rest of the batteries were pretty decent, but that Soaker D, I did not like that battery. That was pretty bad. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.